on my phone. Good morning, all. It's January 25th, uh, 2024, 10 o'clock. The Recovery Task Force meeting will convene. You could rise for the pledge, please. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. So we're going to open up, obviously, with minutes approval. Has anyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? Any changes, additions, deletions? Who took first? Sorry. We have a motion second. Any discussion? Anyone not in favor of it? Carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, would you mind if we go you first, me second? Sure. Harrison, we're going to go a little bit out of order. So uh, pardon me. I'm making an audible. I don't like your defense. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm going to ask our county uh, manager to open up and I'm going to follow up with some comments regarding this process and where we are and where I think we need to be. Perfect. Good morning. Um, thank you for the opportunity to let me speak this morning. Um, I think we would, as the county, would like to clear up a few um, concerns that we've heard. Um, we've talked to a number of you, either through your city manager um, or through the public or, um, or and, and have watched some of your council meetings. Um, the first thing we like to tell you is this is not uh, Lee County. Lee County is not driving this plan. Um, this plan was developed by the community input, by the branch input, and by obviously you. We have not, we as the county have not gone in and changed or deviated from what has been brought forward. So I just want to make that clear that, that that's not the intention of what the county wants to do. And quite honestly, uh, the document that we have in front of us, the draft that we have, the county's reviewed and we aren't changing anything if, if, if and when it's approved. So and what I mean by that is there's these are these are concerns and needs of the community. And so we are going to look to um, mesh what the board's policies and procedures are with those initiatives. So if you look at our agenda, the county's board agenda, in it right now we have hurricane Ian items. That will morph into uh, long-term recovery plan items. And then we will, we will develop um, our plans through the initiatives that have been laid out um, by the direction of our board. Now, another piece of this is, another part of the conversation is, this plan doesn't delve into specific community needs. I don't believe that was the intention of this plan. This plan, again, was an overarching um, plan that brought in all those components of the community's needs through the community, through the branches, and through all of you. The implementation and the municipal um, recovery plans that each of you may be doing yourselves should integrate with this plan. And that is where we believe the projects and more specific to your community would lie. So um, again, this we believe again. This is a lot of work by the community, and a lot of comments by the community of what they feel they need and they want to see. Um, so I believe um, Fort Myers Beach has um, a recovery plan through Tidal Basin, as well as one that was delivered through FEMA. I know that Sanibel and Fort Ma the City of Fort Myers also have that same plan, specifically from FEMA. I think those are the those are the ones that are specific to your community and will be integrated into our opinion, integrated into the long term recovery plan to the point of I think um, one of the councils asked if that plan can be changed to be specific to them. Yes, your plan can be changed however you choose um, that that is for your community. I think the county wanted to ensure and our board made that very clear um, during a work session that they did not want to be the group that managed this and told everybody what they had to do. It's, it's imperative that each entity, whether it's a municipality, school district, fire department, they have their own, their own needs that they need to move forward with. It shouldn't be the county pushing that. The county's going to approve their component, what we're responsible for, and that would also allow you to do what you need to do. So I hope 
that that provided a little bit of clarity on where we are. This is some of the conversation that we had with specifically the municipalities, um, city managers specifically. So we've had those conversations so they were clear that you can do what you need to do in that plan. It doesn't change the board accepting the entirety of the plan. Whatever you want to do is up to your governing body. So I hope that helps a little bit. Commissioner, thank you. Thank you. Um, the other thing that we tried to do, and again, um, when we envisioned putting this plan together, it was one that obviously we tried to identify a timeline. We tried to at least adhere to a timeline. And, you know, it's certainly my opinion, and I spoke with staff today, that um, we have not etched um, a date in stone. Our projection was we would bring this back to the county commissioners on March 6th. Um, we are flexible and have been flexible. And from this commissioner's point of view, I'm certainly going to be very open-minded and flexible to continue this process. Because as I've said to each and every one of you, I wanna make sure your voice is heard. I'm not looking to wind this down. I don't have to hit a particular date. And quite frankly, there's a lot of things that are in play, not only with this plan, but collectively that we recover. Uh, we all obviously, um, have our own special niche we're supposed to need within our community. However, it's important that we come back together as a whole. Um, there's many things in play, um, you know, and many of us have been up to Tallahassee. Um, there's a lot of discussions that are taking place with the budget that's going on up there where it may be um, a little bit different. Um, and again, optimistically saying a little bit different, but it's potentially going to be um, pretty pretty drastically different than last year's funding. Uh, with that in mind, um, I certainly had the privilege of working with uh, Director Guthrie and his staff, and all of us in municipalities, with the, with the exception of Estero and Benear, have loans that were actually extended to you all. Um, and again, part of the initial $350 million was an opportunity to help us with cash flow. It was an opportunity to allow us the flexibility to um, utilize this amount of money for any FEMA or any type of reimbursement you were anticipating. Initially, the thoughts were debris. Okay, we all had to submit project lists um, with what you know we thought was outstanding, and with that, we tried to quantify it with a dollar amount. And collectively, in this room, there's about 200 million dollars in loans. It's premature right now for us to have any real clarity on the flexibility that DEM is going to have, the time frame that they're going to have in utilizing this. Director Guthrie would like to be flexible where we have the opportunity as we potentially collect money in one silo, debris, let's just say. And you certainly have a project in the FEMA world where it's a list and you know you're gonna receive something. You could repurpose, reallocate, and continue to shuffle. The good news or bad news was last year, the 350 was out of the budget. So this is money that's not necessarily forecasted to be. It also will help reduce some of the anxiety as funding may not necessarily be at the level. And therefore, with some of the anxiety, some of the conversations, some of the timelines that have now butt up to this, I certainly am more than flexible and certainly talked to continue this process to allow everyone to have additional opportunities. And what I hope to achieve is to have some good conversations um, to try to clarify and narrow in on it. But I also hope to have at least another opportunity at another meeting to go over some more details um, as the Department of Emergency Management continues to define and give us the flexibility that has certainly been talked about. Um, we certainly spent a great deal of time uh, with both Luke, Luke Strickland, his chief of staff and Director Guthrie, and it's in the infancy stages, but I do believe it'll give us a lot of flexibility in the ability to repurpose um, the loan money we received as our list and some of the items get paid back. So if you have a list of 20 items and you got reimbursed for the top four, other items still have that potential and you could reuse that. 
I want to have the details. I want to have, obviously, the mechanism to share that with you all. So with a couple of the things in play, I'm certainly, you know, talking and looking to this board with the opportunity to not have today be the last meeting. We have an opportunity to digest some more. We have some other things in play and want to get a feel for you know, people around the table. I also think we're in the middle of session, so this is going to be an evolution. And as much as we're trying to come up with a plan, you know, part of the recovery is obviously making sure we recover as we have advocating for the things that we potentially need and understanding where appropriations may be and where we may need to be flexible and pivot in a different direction. So those are my thoughts. That's certainly what I've had in my head. I don't know if anyone else has um, any thoughts about, um, you know, those comments and continue to extend. So, David, I'll take your comment first. And Thank then you. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, you know, the Florida legislation is in the third week of, of their session right now. So there's a long, long road to go with that. And, and uh, as we continue to lobby for funds to come down to this community. I, I too believe it's it's premature to disband this committee and the subcommittees um, or the branches that we have. So I would like to make a motion to ask um, for the task force to continue to meet on a monthly basis until the final report is submitted and re reviewed by all task members. I would second that for conversation. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Chair. Um, County Manager Harner, thank you for, you know, the explanation. What I want to understand is, you know, this product that we have, you know, it's great that we have, you know, a product right now that we can take a look at. And, and to me, it's a starting point from the accumulation of all the information that everyone has put forth. So, um, David, thank you for bringing the motion forward because I, I knew for our municipality, having you know, pretty recently received this, we couldn't weigh in on this. And now we have an opportunity to take a look at it, come back with substantive information and input um, that we can all look and then have this together. It's my understanding this product, if I'm not mistaken, is the product for us around the table as stakeholders to take forward to the BOCC. Is that a fair assumption, just the ownership of that or are the stakeholders at the table to bring that forward for BOC? Is that BOCC? Is that correct? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> we were discussing something. I'm, I apologize. That did absolutely fine. I want to make sure I answer this. Better. When I when I look at this product, um, is this the product, the culmination of the information and the approval of this table here? to put forward to the BOCC? Because you said it wasn't your county's plan, it's not our Sanibel's plan. It's a regional plan of what we've all gone through and to work to the success of the recovery for all of us regionally. But understanding each of us also has our individual plan that will probably be tagged on to this. Um, is that a fair statement that we're the stakeholders that are actually the board that will be voting committee that'll be voting this forward? Correct, you'll okay. be making that recommendation. You'll be making that recommendation not only to our board, but also to to each governing entity. So it's not just each governing entity is going to decide, yes, we like this plan or or no, we like to amend it. And here's how we like to amend it. We like to be more specific about our projects, which will be specific to that entity. So, you know, the county, the county, like I said, is going to approve the document as it is more than likely. I can't I can't say that we're going to recommend that to our board to approve it as it is. And we will work to mesh the board's objectives with the initiatives but that that's the county each entity has their own authority to do what they want to do but it'll be this product Correct. so is it this product as written today or potentially this product that we now have the opportunity to give input on and then submit as a group to say, we have been able to take the time that this is, we just recently got this, I, you know, we unfortunately couldn't put it towards our council. We got it at seven o'clock on a Thursday night. It was a vacation, it was a Martin Luther King day on Monday. And then we had our meeting on the 16th. We still need time. Sure. There's a lot of great information on this. And then with each of the branch leaders, I know that that hadn't been delivered to them. I would love the input of the branch leaders looking at those subsections that they had also committed time to say, you know what, 
I think we can tweak this. Is the essence good? Is it good? Are there some tweaks? Because I think we really have an opportunity to make this an amazing product and we finally have something at hand that we can give input to. I think, in my opinion, there's there's two pieces to that. Okay. I think this is an overarching document that allows each entity to amend according to their policies and procedures and direction. It, I don't think you would have to bring that document back here for everyone to vote on for your own specific entity. What you're saying is this document that we have before us today is the overarching document that each entity therefore can can add or amend based on what they specifically need. That's the way that that's the way this document was developed to be an overarching document and allow each entity to do their own thing. Totally understand that. I, so I, you don't have to bring that back. But if yeah. the branches have, I don't mean to interrupt you. I apologize. No, I was just saying that wasn't my question. If we as stakeholders here at the table are the ones that are approving this, and we finally have something in hand that we can read in its entirety. And, and give, you know, whether it's Fort Myers Beach or Estero or every stakeholder, look at that little section that's written about them. Ours is this big. Mm -hmm. We know we can tell that story for the greater good for everyone. Not that we're saying that's our story. Our story is our own product. But if this is our over overreaching and over, this is the product that we're going to approve, I want to make sure that we have the time to absorb it and give that good impact. Maybe it's another month. And then that way, as I asked at the last meeting, we could have a red line. You know, you're, you're holding this product. You're getting good information from every source around this table um, because we're, we're all, we've got to buy in and understand and feel like we've been able to give the input. If this is the final product that I've just received and I haven't been able to give the input, we were asked not to put anything in writing to submit for input. So we did not, but I can't do it on the fly today. And, and the city of Sanibel says, you know what, We're, we need to take time. We need to look at Sanibel's part in this. Look at everything, every branch and say, how can we make this the best product it can be? And I think another month would allow us to do that. I, I don't know if that was part of your motion or are you still looking to approve this today? Or if that's on the agenda. I'm sorry to take so much time, but it's that important no for all of us. If and I'm I not may, sorry. If I may. <laughs> Um, if I may, um, listen, what we have is to have the ability to operate um, as a committee. We follow Sunshine. I didn't have a conversation with anyone in this room. Okay. I like you read a document. Okay. I certainly want everyone to be able to adopt and feel comfortable with this document. I also want to make sure it doesn't have so many deviations to it that it really is commingling your plan mm -hmm. and the county's plan. But I more than recognize that time is a requirement. We've never had a stopwatch. We've gone from January. We now said March. We are flexible. Okay. And this was my conversation with Dave and Chris before I walked in here, not knowing what anyone was going to say. But as someone that really volunteered for this chairman responsibility, I thought it certainly made sense to continue to dialogue, to continue to have it, and not have the anxiety with an end date that has to be. The other thing that is troubling is we're in the middle of session, and there's a lot of things that will go on with this. And recovery to me is about a plan, but it's also, unfortunately, about money, appropriations, and how do we recover, okay? And if anyone that knows me, I many times get into the weeds when it comes to money because that's really the most important thing that I look at, not the most important thing, but in my eyes. And I have a lot of consternation. And I had the privilege of learning an awful lot of good information that I want to share with this group from the Department of Emergency Management so we talk about the flexibilities. Leadership right now is a certain way. Leadership is always going to change as well. Each house, speaker, each president are going to have a different way they go about things, okay? But the initiative right now is based on what was submitted for projects and based on where funding would like to be pre-pandemic. We are significantly, and I use that word lightly, but I would use it three times, 
different from what we have submitted and what right now would even be contemplated to fund. And we're all going to have issues. So the part of recovery that I'm looking at is how do we recover? We need funds. And I think that there was an opportunity to perhaps bring some more information back to everyone and make sure we understand that piece. So with the plan being voluminous, still trying to read it, understand your points, understanding you're gonna have your own plan, understanding funding in disarray to some degree and not clear, I just thought it made sense to continue. And as long as I had support from the county manager that the March 6th date isn't in red, doesn't have to be in you know erasable ink, uh, or you know not not erasable ink. I mean we have flexibility, and that was just my overall sense without anyone here. I'm glad David, you brought up that motion. I appreciate your comments, Holly. But just in general, um, kind of understand you know a couple of people. What are anyone else's thoughts about continuing? Kevin, I would say that City of Bonita Springs is ready to move now. Okay. And it's been 15 months, 16 mm -hmm. months since Ian. Uh, we've been working on this task force for a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that uh, uh, our, con our constituents, our stakeholders and so forth are ready to see progress. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm sort of a ready for aim kind of guy. You know, the pl plan can be tweaked plan can change, whatever, but we sort of need to get on with it. What's going to happen at the municipal level is that we, we look at this as a resource <clears throat> effort. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the overall plan. This gives us ideas of things we could work on. Mm -hmm. This gives us a way to go forward in terms of our own plans. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't need to be, a. It, in my view, it doesn't need to be a perfect document, nor do I think it can ever be a perfect document. So I think it is time to, to move on because the legislature's in session. If we're going to go to legislative day next week, which I'm planning to do, and to talk to the to the our representatives and senators and the House Speaker and the President Pro Tem, then I think we're we need to be ready to say we're ready to move forward and we have some ideas and here's what we want to see funded. So, you know, City of Medina Springs is ready to move forward and and uh, get to work. Thank you for your input. Other comments? Uh, obviously, the village of Estero is ready to move forward also. I think you, your question you asked was, should we continue these meetings? And we, we think there, we should. Uh, we have our projects. We're, we're maybe fortunate in Estero that we don't have a lot of recovery areas, but we do have resiliency uh, projects. And so we're, we're, we know what those projects are. We know we don't really know how much they're going to cost, but we are in a state now that says what's next. And what's next is where we're going to get the funding and how much are we going to get. And then we can move forward. And so uh, that that's going to be, I think it's a little, could be frustrating for our council uh, and some of our citizens saying, hey, you've identified these things. We've worked on it. When are we going to get it going? And Getting it going means funding sources, and we, you know, we're working with Haggerty to help us in that regard. So we've got good communication going back and forth. But I don't think our work is done yet because when we first started this, we, you know, we're looking at a lot of funding, but uh, we we don't have enough money to do everything that we have to do. So the issue is, how does that get doled out? And that's, I think, from our standpoint, that's really important. And we'll find that out by continuing to have these meetings and making sure that we're looking at the, the entire county's needs. There's no doubt about it. Every piece has a contribution to making this a, a better place. And so it, I think the task force has been charged with what are those best things to do for recovery and resilience. And I think we've got a good representation here uh, that can help steer those directions in the right area. Getting this approved, I think, is good, but I don't see a lot of specific actions that 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 I see in this thing. But I think it's got a good overreaching uh, area in there that, to, to look at. But I guess maybe I'm a little like Chris. I'm a little more action-oriented, and this has been a long process, 
And so we're anxious to see how this can move forward. And I know there's a lot of moving parts that I'm not an expert to make that happen. Mayor? Mr. The plans for adoption is what date from the county? So we have it penciled, and I use that word very, very, very you know, flexible. Penciled from March 6th, and we certainly have the ability to move that date, March 20th, you know, um, but specifically to Fort Myers Beach, I'm sorry, Fort Myers, you know, just thoughts about, you know, plan, any thoughts you have, you know, I also want everyone to understand we're a whole, okay? So when I look at fundings, when I look at borrowings, you know, the devastation that the county, Fort Myers Beach or Sandoval has, I look at the loans, okay, that were taken out. I look at Estero and look at Benita. So to the extent that we have members that have substantial damage and trying to have clarity, as you had indicated, Mayor, about you know where's the funding source coming from there is an opportunity to certainly utilize something that many of us have taken advantage of which was a loan from dem mm -hmm. and the flexibility is a pathway as well for some funding which again when i look at the county cape fort myers beach and sanibel and fort myers we all have borrowed from the dem we all have damage and all levels of devastation we're trying to do. So collectively as a group, if it's a month, I don't see the harm. I also want to make sure that you understand the flexibility you have, because if you still are looking for clarity for funding, we'd like to try to provide additional information that Haggerty has been great in doing, but information we've gotten directly from the state and we're working on to try to bring back to this body. The reason I ask that question under next steps, plan adoption, it says municipalities can participate in optional one-on-one -on -one sessions in February to review plan for adoption. And it seems like, I know our city manager, I believe has met with you. Um, not yet, We're, not, I think we have a meeting next week. Okay. Um, I almost feel like we're putting the cart before the, the horse that we haven't, as as uh, Ali said, we got this, what, a week ago? And it, there's a lot to digest. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of work went into this. Um, from my standpoint, I'm a little uncomfortable. Our, our staff is okay. I'm a little uncomfortable because I would like that opportunity, if we need to, to have those one-on-one -on -one sessions in February before it's adopted. Huh? Yeah, when I, <clears throat> we take a look at this document, uh, you know, I kind of see this this document as a regional document, mm -hmm. uh, like an overview mm -hmm. that's established uh, some priorities and some silos to work within. I know our city is working on our own specific plan, and I think that's important for each one of us around this table to recognize once this plan is adopted, for me personally, I kind of see it as a, an overview or to give us some direction. But it's up to each municipality to develop their own plan. And I know the city of Cape Coral, that's the, we've already went to the next step. We're already doing that. We're, we're meeting with Haggerty. We're, we're meeting uh, with our staff members to develop a plan uh, that will eventually uh, be brought before council for approval. So I think it's important if I don't think that we as a city of Cape Coral, we're not going to see everything in this document that we want. Absolutely. And I know that's our expectation. Um, we are getting to a point uh, that I think that we need to have a uh, at least some type of a strategic plan to move forward with this plan. My question is, once the plan is adopted, um, is there an opportunity at any time if, if the need arises to go back and to do an amendment to the plan? Uh, and I'm assuming once the county approves that, uh, that would be done at the county level. Uh, or, be, or would we be able to uh, have input as 
the organizations around here, around this table. So I envision this as a regional plan. And as you go through your own plan for your city, if there are things that need to be adopted, amended, you do that in your plan. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at this two reasons that I brought up this topic. One, the nature of digesting this and giving everybody an opportunity for another 30 days to do that. And two, to provide some additional clarity on some opportunities that I have a list of everyone that's borrowed money from the DM to clarify that. Um, because having met with Kevin Guthrie, um, he had indicated that we as a county were there, but he hadn't met with any of the municipalities and wants to make sure we communicate the information to you all and make sure it's clear. So I looked at it as two different issues. One, the voluminous nature of the document when we received it, and like everyone else, I have to digest it as well. And then two, the potential funding sources. So it's a little bit different for each and every municipality because the level of reconstruction is so different. And the planning that you're all doing is so different. So this is a regional plan. And I look at your plan for your city as a sub plan. That's the way I look at it. I don't think we're going to be able to say, tweak this for Cape Coral, tweak this for Sanibel, tweak this for Fort Myers Beach. But overall, if the theme covers it and your plan is underneath that, that's what you go by. But as much as this plan, we need to digest it to Mayor uh, Anderson's point of view and, and certainly Councilwoman Smith. But the other opportunity is to try to provide as much clarity as we can in funding. So you know that because as someone that's on this list, if we were to give some clarity, well, you might have some opportunities as the city of Cape Coral with the $51 million that you have borrowed and we could provide that, that might help you in particular things. And the task force is to help us recover. And that is also identifying any opportunities we have to accelerate, maximize funding. That's why I look at it. So that was, that was, it was in my head not for any other discussion. And I wasn't looking to have this go on for 90 more days. I'm talking about a 30 day period of time, give everybody an opportunity to digest this, have some clarity with some funding sources, see if there's any other opportunities that are out there. Because listen, we asked Kevin and we came across something and the director couldn't have been better about the clarity of it. I just wanna make sure we all understand that because if we can recycle, and I'll use that word for lack of a better term, $200 million a couple of times over, it helps all of us because I will tell you all, at least from what I heard, funding's going to be, last year was Christmas. This year, not so much. Mm -hmm. So again, we also have the opportunity to do that. So that was the reason and rationale behind my thinking. That makes sense. So with that being said, um, and as some of my other colleagues have said, uh, waiting another 30 days to make sure that we get it right, uh, for me, is that's a no-brainer. You know, so if we have to uh, give us the opportunity to uh, review the document, be able to meet with the county, meet with our um, experts uh, for an additional 30 days, and then come back possibly at our next meeting, I think uh, there we've waited this long, another 30 and days. That was kind of my thought, but it also try to set this meeting up where you all have had your one on ones. You've all then had staff to come back to you and talk about what the issues are and how you want to make some potential changes and anything that may come back and say, okay, let's tweak this and we'll have something. So I think there's the timeline allows the one on one meetings to take place. The timeline allows us as a body to understand those those uh, meetings and any type of adjustments for the regional plan and also as well as to do as much clarity as we can continue to do the funding opportunities will be another month into session okay we'll have some clarity because you know the first draft is there we'll start to see it come together natural resources we haven't seen their draft yet but it just gives us opportunities in comprehensive of a document and potentially some additional funding opportunities that may be available to us where we don't have precise clarity at the moment. And that gives me anxiety. Does that make sense? Karen? Um, I'll weigh in from Fort Myers Beach perspective. I mean, since we were ground zero and Sanibel ground zero plus, um, we too obviously have had a change in council. Our representative that has participated the last year 
is no longer on council. So we and I inherited this um, from our council's perspective. And I know you've watched the meeting that we agree that there is not, you know, this is so expansive and we need more time. Um, I think the 30 day extension without accepting this and without voting on it right now would provide that opportunity. We have not had one-on-one -on -one meetings with the county um, personally, and I know our town manager is daily with Tidal Basin, but the council has not been daily with Tidal Basin as to really shoring up our plan. And I know our mayor is gonna be at the legislative section <coughs> sessions next week, along with our town manager. Um, we have an m and meeting where we wanted to discuss this coming up the beginning of February. So I think if we could coordinate these additional meetings, take a step back, wait that extra 30 days, and then come back, I think that would be beneficial to everyone. On the motion I made, I'm, I'm simply looking for you know, the feedback from, from our branches. I want everybody to have a, a chance to review this. So um, I would be one want to you know extend it for 30 days or make a friendly uh, amendment to my motion on that um but I, I i'm looking for the feedback from everybody at this point let's understand that what we're doing is flexible okay i think 30 days seems more than ample time for everyone to weigh in i think for some of the players that want to pull the trigger already it allows us as a whole to understand that we all have to digest this we also have to be sympathetic to our neighbor, to our north or south or east or west that have more damage and trying to come through this. Um, and again, I'm just trying to said this from day one to my speech. You've always heard we need to heal as a body. I'm not looking to have my heart be OK, but my lungs not. OK, Lee County is a body and we need to make sure. And it's more important for me as someone that wanted to you know, put this together is that we as a whole. OK can say, we're proud of this, we've done this, we've given an opportunity, we looked at it, we had you know feedback from our branches. The branches have been invaluable, okay? And continue to interact with us. And they can provide us feedback because there's no sunshine issue associated with that. It's been disbanded, you can talk to you and you could bring in whatever conversations you have. But the anxiety that I just sensed, I did have an opportunity to watch Fort Myers Beach's uh, meeting I just thought this might be, and I asked staff when we first got together this morning, would we be okay to do this? And we have been flexible and we want to continue to be flexible. Okay. We don't get a gold star if we're done by March 6th and we need to go to March 20th. No big deal. Okay. But I think collectively, if we can all digest a plan, everybody have a one on one meetings with the county, give some feedback back, bring some clarity from funding. I think we've achieved our objective. So those are the thoughts I have in my head. Does anyone have any objectives and uh, objections in what I've just articulated? No, I, Chair, I think that sums up everything. It gives us the ability to digest. David, if is your motion including not going forward with a vote for approval at this time today, which is what I think I heard, um, because I'd be very amenable to that because it will give us the opportunity to delve into this provide feedback and maybe we can have a better summary. You know, maybe some of the municipalities are saying this is perfect for me. That's great for you. Um, let us all have that same opportunity to make sure that we can all buy into this and put our names proudly on something that we are all participants and stakeholders in. So I think that's excellent. So, so Dave, if you wouldn't mind to just modify your motion. Okay. And again, the good news about this is we haven't set a particular set of rules. So as a chair, I can certainly help in this process. And certainly if we could just let's extend any type of approval for 30 days. Okay. Let's recognize that we need opportunity to digest this, to have the one-on-one -on -one meetings and potentially identify some funding sources. And right now, you know, plus or minus 30 days is what we're looking for. So moved. And I would um, support that amended motion on my second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Any objections? That motion carries you massively. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, Chair, could I also ask that there's a possibility we had asked for a Word document to be sent, and maybe it could be specific, so that way we could go through and do our 
our input, and again, we're not trying to write our plan into yours. What we're trying to do is write a plan, a regional plan, and make sure that our story or is, is specific and be beneficial. So I know we were looking to get that, and that would be great. And then we could submit those comments back. Sure, we'll provide that. Thank you, sir. So with what I just did, I know I threw you all a little bit of a curveball and probably a big one. So if we could on the fly adjust yes, what we need to, not absolutely. to try to get to the point, because I know we've taken a little bit more time than anticipated. But the good news is we do have a wrap up that probably can take place you know, next month. We'll have that opportunity. We can close it out so we can stay on time. Everyone's got some tight schedules. And this chair needs to be out of here because I have to go talk to a whole bunch of people in Sandoval. So um, if you will, is that okay? Yes, I think we can absolutely truncate this meeting um, based on, on the events that just occurred. And I think that there are a few slides that we can go over that will facilitate uh, the body being able to look at the document and understand what they're seeing and have that framed in the way that, that make, makes sense. So I think we can just hit a couple of slides to do that and, and, and move on. Uh, I assume it would be all right for those of us who are early adopters that to go ahead with our February meetings and to move forward that uh, even though we may be 30 days ahead of everybody so that, you know, Benita could, if Benita's ready to move, then we can go ahead and move. That, that That's what I envision, Chris. The other thing I envisioned is, you know, if, if we flush this out, you have your one-on-one -on -one meetings, the next meeting may be abbreviated because we've accomplished what we wanted to, and everyone feels a sense of thorough comprehension of this document. Great. Harrison, I'll turn it over Great. to you guys. So I, like I said, I'm going to quickly move to the part of this presentation that's really about the plan as a document, uh, and maybe that helps facilitate uh, you know, your further review and, and understanding of it. Uh, so there has been, you know, this period of plan development and where we've been trying to integrate feedback and stakeholder feedback, um, you know, we've distributed and, you know, obviously there's been a conversation around needing more time to look at that and review it, but these are the entities that have been provided the document to, to look at it, the municipalities, the recovery task force, of course, and the board of county commissioners. So really quickly, uh, this plan is aimed at these recovery task force objectives. Uh, and, and we really wanted to kind of level set around, if you look at the plan, what is its intention to achieve? And I think it's been, has been talked about today. Uh, you know, we were looking at a plan that is high level, uh, that allows communities to tailor it specifically to their needs, uh, allows great ability of flexibility um, from the different municipalities, leverages innovation, uh, allows community to have feedback, uh, it includes key input from stakeholders. So that's what the process was designed for. And as you look at the document, that really, that idea of having a, uh, a broad, a powerful strategic direction without, uh, you know, having a situation where the communities can't do the things that they have prioritized, uh, you know, was really front and center as a goal. So we established a comprehensive strategy detailing the actions, resources, and processes needed to recover, uh, provided a common platform for the whole community, and you know, helps the Lee County area work across jurisdictions and sectors to optimize resources, achieve more complicated long-term objectives, and better endure and improve the ability to withstand the next challenge. So again, those, that's just the frame at which this plan uh, is really kind of hoping to support Lee County. Uh, just really quickly, you'll see that there are 43 initiatives, uh, and those are those initiatives, of course, were born of at first 85 uh, and brought down to this uh, smaller number as they were combined and uh, logical connections were made. The initiatives address community identified challenge areas, uh, and the initiatives can be used to promote collaboration among municipalities and the county. So really the common ground space, the plan is, is meant to exist as, as the common ground space between the municipalities, the jurisdictions, and the major institutions represented here. There's a section uh, that begins with acknowledgments and certainly lists all those who took part in this process. The recovery task force itself, all of the members of the body. There's an executive summary, provides that high level description of the plan, the scope, 
and illustrates the vision for recovery resilience for the region. Uh, there's a section within that, that that talks about paving the way, the plan scope, and the county vision for recovery resilience, the principles, uh, the understanding of living with water, which is a discussion of the fact that water is both a resource and a risk in this area. It's obviously um, a huge natural resource, but obviously it brings risk with it as well. And the great community diversity that we see and needing to make sure that this plan accommodates different visions. So these are the recovery principles that we point out in the plan. It's a whole community activity. Uh, the county's existing resilience work should be leveraged, building toward Lee County's future, and honoring community differences. And a, a lot of work was done to work with you to understand the project that you've already identified as being important. Um, one thing that did occur in our process was really to make sure that the plan uh, allows the strategic headline for those projects to go forward. So building the plan, there's a building the plan section which really recounts the process. Perhaps this is not the last time that the county will want to go through a recovery task force process that brings together uh, you know, the, the, the entities and organizations and, and jurisdictions here, uh, but also you know, powerfully tries to include the community and stakeholders. So that process is, is uh, written about and described. And uh, really a discussion of how the plan was built and this you know, initiative development process, which as we know has been uh, you know, heavy lifting, but um, has really uh, you know, produced these strategic, strategic frames that do include um, high level specific actions. <coughs> uh, a description of the branches, of course, and their work and the initiatives uh, and a discussion of what initiatives are and how they work. So uh, we've had a lot of conversation about the initiatives. Um, I won't belabor that here because I think we can do it next time. But um, for those of you who have an interest, um, you know, we, we did list in this presentation which you've received all of the initiatives. Um, so you can kind of see what the key conversations were in each branch. Um, so maybe we'll just go through these, these and then wrap. Um, the planning capacity initiatives. Yes, I think I'll speak to those. So these initiatives are the foundation for the other initiatives. They're the things that kind of cross across um, cross initiatives to help make sure that the policy infrastructure that may need to be in place or the initiatives that may need to be in place are accounted for in the overarching plan. The infrastructure initiatives, and so the, a, a huge part of the conversation, uh, in, you know, in the infrastructure branch, was around some of the key outcomes experienced in uh, Hurricane Ian, uh, in terms of the shelter network, in terms of thinking about critical facilities and fortifying essential services, uh, understanding about uh, the need to rebuild resilient communications infrastructure. Uh, and augment resilient energy. So really, and, and of course, the, the importance of water, potable water, uh, and wastewater infrastructure. So all of that really uh, created the structure for uh, you know, these very central initiatives. The natural resources initiatives uh, spoke at once about protecting the, the great draw of natural resources and the tourism that exists because of natural resources. Uh, with the need to protect them, uh, to think about land use, to think about fl uh, flood and stormwater management, uh, to think about the role of public recreation. Uh, and so the initiatives in that area deal with those things. Housing, uh, of course, before this storm uh, came, there, there were issues around housing and important uh, community conversations occurring around affordable workplace, uh, workforce housing. And so uh, this, these initiatives really spoke to what is necessary in the way of programming to bring back the housing stock, but also to look for new opportunities to in, in, you know, have more workforce housing. The economic recovery branch uh, was focused on getting businesses back up as quickly as possible from a resilience standpoint, but then also um, looking at what needs to be done to support businesses that have already been through this um, through Hurricane Ian and are still trying to recover. 
The economic recovery branch also put a lot of endorsement on other initiatives since economic recovery re is so reliant on the other parts of the community. So they definitely um, had their, their voice and their expertise um, injected into the other initiatives that you see across the other parts of the plan, like housing and education and workforce. Health and social services uh, dealt a lot with uh, innovation uh, in, in response to Hurricane Ian, uh, thinking about a mobile health clinic system uh, and thinking about it in a way that allowed for community differences. Uh, some communities having more public transportation, others needing to rely on different kinds of approaches, but really an overarching regional vision for how could mobile health be uh, a solution, not only in disaster, but improving access to health every day. Uh, a resilient hubs network, a, a, a fairly new concept that's emerged uh, that, that allows uh, community assets really um, to be used in a powerful way to enhance the uh, ability of residents to stay in their homes or to at least be safe in staying in their homes uh, in and after a disaster and have the resources uh, that, that allow them to, to do that safely. Uh, also thinking, of course, about the, the key uh, um, role of behavioral health care facilities and resources in the region uh, and, you know, needing to make sure that there's resilient health care system um, in terms of critical and essential services. I'll go back and fight it if we did. Okay. The cultural resources branch, um, our arts and culture sector has been heavily impacted between um, COVID and then now Hurricane Ian, and they have not had the opportunity to rebound from either. So Ian was a particularly hard hit. We know that arts and culture are a key component of our tourism industry and keeping and retaining skilled workers and folks wanting to live here every day. Um, so the arts and culture sector that was present for the cultural resources branch um, really was trying to establish initiatives that would give them the opportunity to both recover from what has happened, but also to make them more resilient going forward. So their initiatives are really based in learning from what happened and understanding sort of what is it going to take for them to be resilient as, as you know, we continue to face challenges going forward and into the future. So last but certainly not least is education. And I think I might have skipped over. Yeah. It. And then of course we had a workforce issue beforehand and our education um, pre-K to 12 system has been heavily impacted, similar to cultural resources between COVID and Hurricane Ian. So this is an area that we were already facing a lot of struggles and, and this, this, uh, this experience has exacerbated that. The good news is um, this branch was focused on things that are already working and things that we've identified um, and that we could quickly rally around um, should funding and partnerships become available for us to move forward on those um, immediately. So this branch was really building off of a lot of great work in many ways that's already happening. So the last thing I'll really touch on uh, before we uh, close the, the meeting, this is the template for the initiatives that appear in the plan. And uh, if you look on the right hand side, you'll see, you can see that uh, you know, there's an objective, there's a need statement, there's a regional approach, there's an impact statement. Uh, some plans take a more truncated uh, approach to information and attempt to be really at the high level. Uh, this is a plan that really is meant to forward implementation. And so uh, space is taken to really create documents that honestly could stand on their own uh, and to provide a common vision of what is the actual need for this initiative? What is the actual regional approach that is being described? Uh, this is a really more robust way to talking about a strategic action than just a literal strategic headline. Um, and so understanding this is this is a plan that has a little bit more meat on the bone in that way. Uh, and that was also by design. So really just wanted to kind of give a sense of that. Um, the, the reason why the document is the length it is and the reason why each initiative really has some heft to it. So with that, I think, uh, you know, obviously there's been some change here. Uh, this was intended to be the final uh, meeting of the Recovery Task Force. There will now be another meeting of the Recovery Task Force. 
I think we will be working with the team uh, to create a process that gets us from here to there and make sure that, uh, you know, there's ability to have, uh, you know, further review and, and understanding of the document between now and then. Uh, it sounds like March, uh, is it 22nd? February. February 22nd. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. A tentative date would be February 22nd. 22nd, 23rd. Or, 20, or 23rd. Mm-hmm. So we'll, of course, work to, to firm up that date. Okay. The, the other point I wanted to make is, um, Chris, Anita could move forward with, you know, and, and if you're ready, if you're, any city here is ready, move forward. I mean, I don't want anyone to not move forward with their plan. I don't want this to stop them. Um, all I'm trying to do is um, for the people that need some additional time, let's just do that. But I also don't want to prevent you from moving forward. So, you know, and that's kind of what we have in mind. So just for clarity purposes, but, you know, we're going to look to the 22nd or the 23rd. So it gives you all approximately a month. Mm-hmm. What I really could impress upon that the meetings take place with obviously your city, the county. So you have the opportunity. So, It's not the 21st where it's taking place and you don't have an opportunity. Whatever we can do to expedite those, let's make sure that happens so we have a real productive meeting. Um, The branches, I can't thank you enough, but feel free to talk to anyone here. You've now had the opportunity to look at that. I mean, we want your input and want to continue to have your input. So because it's not a task necessarily for the branch at the moment, doesn't mean that I'm not looking forward to some feedback as you've seen this and you know, certainly uh, feel free to contact any one of us and certainly call my office anytime you want to. So but that's kind of where I wanted to get to today. Um, so our meeting obviously is shortened as a result of me pivoting hard. I hope I haven't dis- disrupted anyone's uh, work life too much by extending this another 30 days, but I want to get it right. And I want everyone to walk out of here feeling, you know, it's as good as it can be. Just a quick question, Chair. Um, would you please, um, could I ask that that the, bl- the branch leaders be given their area to maybe they can take a quick review? That might help expedite as well. Um, and they could look at that and say, yeah, this really sums it up great. But I think it's important that they as branch leaders see what's been put in for their, initi- uh, for their initiatives as well. Is that a possibility? Certainly. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you, Chair. We don't need to take a photo, so um, we'll wait next time doing that. Um, I'll open up to public comment. Any public comment? Stephanie Wardine. Stephanie Wardine, System Director for Community Affairs at Lee Health and branch member serving on planning and capacity. Um, excellent meeting and discussion today. Understand the volume of work and the effort and the goodwill, certainly. I uh, just want to piggyback off what Holly mentioned about the branch members receiving individual areas. The planning and capacity would benefit from seeing all of the areas, uh, if that's at all possible. Lee Ford, branch member, I uh, kudos to what she just said. Thank you. Just to clarify for the public, this will certainly be online, the entire document. So you have that ability too. if you're anxious, we'll make sure we get it distributed. But if you want to go back this afternoon, we haven't sent you a copy. It's available online and it covers all pieces. So if one intersects infrastructure goes into housing or natural resources, feel free to do that. Um, And by all means, as I've indicated, feel free, anyone in the branches, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But feel free to call my office with any thoughts and anyone else around the table. So we look forward to your input and can't thank you enough for your valuable service. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Any other items we need to discuss? Call for an adjournment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.